Oh, it's you again. Oh. Well, that's great. Hey, hey, I'm hey, great. when is it gonna be my turn? <laughs> Come on. Welcome back. Oh, hi, I'm Mark. I used to be a senior artist at Blizzard Entertainment and now I teach art for a living. In this emotional weekly episode of my YouTube art school series, I'll show you how to draw compelling facial expressions for your characters since um, it's been requested a lot. There are different layers of complexity here, but as usual, we'll start simple and add more and more subtlety to our facial expressions as we go. We're about to cover a lot of emotions today, so oh, quickly, let's get this class started. Class is in session. Pay attention. A and pay the class fee of either one like or one sub. You must. It's very affordable, so don't cheat. Now that we got that out of the way, let's draw some facial expressions. We're going to be tackling this in three steps. Three levels of difficulty. With each level, we'll just be adding more complexity, so it's going to get harder as we go. But it's also going to allow us more control, more subtlety. By the end of today's class, you should be able to draw or at least know how to draw a lot of different facial expressions. Wow. Let's get right into it. Uh, uh, never mind, I already started. At level one, we'll be focusing on four basic emotions. Five actually, including the neutral face. I think these are some of the most common emotions that you'll be drawing for your characters anyways. So if you're not used to drawing facial expressions, you'll definitely want to start here. I'm talking about a neutral face, a happy face, a sad one, an angry one, and a surprised one. These can all be simplified with very few details, and they're pretty easy to get right too, actually. You'll see. Especially if you're a student of my art school program, where among many other topics, we learn how to draw the human head in great detail. Check the link in the description to learn more about the program and use the coupon in the video description for a big discount extended until the end of the month for subscribers only. Anyways, at level one, we're particularly interested in the position of the eyebrows, the mouth and the cheeks. We'll start with the least amount of detail possible to make it easier. So let's see what happens on these simplified faces. The neutral face is going to leave all of those features relaxed. The eyebrows will be mostly straight, the mouth will be straight, and no particular muscle is flexing in the face, so the eyes are not particularly wide open. They open up a lot more when we look at a surprised face, though. Here, the eyebrow muscles are pulling the eyebrows up, and along with them, the upper eyelids. As a result, the eyes appear wide open. The open mouth also forces the face to move the jawbone down, or the mandible, stretching the face and the eyes vertically even more. But if we leave the eyebrows where they are and look at a happy face now, we can see the smile instead forcing the cheek muscles to flex, which pushes on the lower eyelids up and slightly changes the shape of the eyes. It's basically the same otherwise. If we move on to the sad face now, uh, we introduce a slight frown. So the eyebrows will be pushing down on the upper eyelids and the mouth won't require the cheek muscles to flex anymore. So the lower eyelids will drop back down. The angry face then is just going to be the opposite of the surprised face. Instead of a full face stretch, we're gonna get a full face flex where the eyebrows are pushing down on the upper eyelids even more and the pinched lips are pushing the lower eyelids up as well. What's cool with these simple characteristics is that you can mix and match them to create a lot more variety of facial expressions. Just always keep in mind what happens with the eye shape overall, depending if there's a stretch or a flex in the eyebrows and the cheeks. The eye shape never changes on its own. It's the muscles in our face that make it happen. A big reason why these look different though is the shape of the mouth, as you can see here. It can play a pretty significant role, so this will be the focus for level two. When we start tweaking the shape of the mouth, we'll be able to get a lot more variety in facial expressions. We communicate a lot with the eyes alone, but simply drawing the mouth differently allows us to draw a lot more different emotions. There are many ways to draw the mouth, but I always keep these five in mind as my foundation. The closed mouth, like we saw already, the laugh, the upside down laugh, or I guess a sad mouth, a yell, and a grin. And we can now use these on our base heads to get a ton of simple facial expressions. Amazing. 
We're only playing with a few ingredients here and we got all of this already. These need a little bit more detail to really be compelling though. She seems bored, so let's fix that. If we just add a laugh, something's missing, isn't it? Like we saw in the first part, flexing the cheeks should also affect the shape of the eyes. As they flex, they rise on the face, which pushes the lower eyelids up. The muscles around the lips also push the cheeks up, and so we should get a bit of a skin fold around the mouth too. And that line, by the way, isn't random. It's called the nasolabial line, and smiling just makes it more pronounced. It's always there, especially when you get older. It starts right behind the nostrils and contours the mouth. There you go, that's better. She's pretty happy, but like in my basic facial expression, when we smile, we also tend to raise or stretch our eyebrows, so let's fix that. Oh my, now she's very happy. The other extreme is when a character is very mad, and once again, the simplified drawings I have on the side here don't really do it justice. Just like a full face laugh, anger can also make us flex our face muscles quite a bit, just in a different way. You bored, bro? What if I told you that you'll never get the girl next to you because you're just a drawing? <laughs> Whoa there, big boy, you mad? As you can see, when the mouth opens up, it tends to stretch our skin and reveal that same nasolabial line fold as well. This time, the cheeks won't be flexing nearly as much though. Instead, the eyebrows will. As they push down, they get closer to the eyes, more so towards the center. And you'll also get the frowning folds here this time. If the character is in a rage, really angry, you might want to draw these folds around the nose too. Damn, he's really taking the news badly. Now then, level 3. Here we are. We can already do a lot at this point, but this last step should allow us to draw even more variety of facial expressions. This time we'll be playing around with the iris position and the head tilt. So far, our characters have been looking at us at eye level, but one thing that really helps sell an emotion is to change our point of view, depending on what we're trying to convey. A character looking at us from above, for example, might seem kind of condescending, like a king looking down at peasants from his big castle. In a similar way, drawing characters as if they were lower or as if we're taller than them can also give us extra ways to communicate the emotions better. It kind of helps to set a hierarchy where the characters will feel inferior or superior depending if they're drawn from above or from below. But there's a little bit more nuance there. Let's take a look at this guy here with a smile. If we tilt the head down while keeping the eyes looking up, we can get a pretty creepy result, kind of like a predator. Imagine a lion hunting you in the savanna, head low to the ground, eyes locked on you with a creepy smile. Do lions smile? Probably not. Anyways, very scary. Now, what if we use that same smile, but from a different angle? Maybe he was smiling before, but now he's laughing out loud. Tilting the head back as you do when you burst out laughing helps make the facial expression more extreme. I think it sells it better. Some facial expressions don't need that at all, like the milder expressions, but the more extreme ones always, almost always benefit from it. Now let's reverse that smile and try something else down here. Right now she kind of looks like she's saying a big yikes, but what do we get if we tilt the head down? Oh no, she didn't like that. This time it's much less creepy than the male version, but she's definitely threatening, like she's about to jump us. The absence of a smile this time around doesn't display the same kind of confidence though. She could also be defending herself or protecting someone. If we try the version where the head is tilted back now, we might get a facial expression conveying fear, aversion, or disgust. It's like there's something she's trying to physically get away from like a, a bomb about to explode. It's a natural thing to try and get our face away from danger. Very dynamic. So anyways, we saw the head tilt up and down with the character's gaze locked onto the viewer. But there's one final detail that we can add. This one, not particularly harder to do. I just haven't found a good spot in the video to fit it in seamlessly. But I'm talking about moving the iris side to side, of course. It's definitely not as significant as some of the other things that we saw today, but it can help us draw some extra facial expressions like when a character is looking to the side, not sure of themselves, maybe questioning what's going on, or when a character is being hunted and they're just looking around like scared, trying to spot the danger while also trying not to move or make any noise. Shh, careful. But now, uh, I think we covered enough facial expressions, so this is going to be a wrap for this week's class. By remembering just a few basic emotions like we saw in the first part, then adding different types of mouths to these same emotions, and then playing around with the head tilt of your character and the direction of their gaze, we're able to get a lot of variety. I'd argue, more than you'll ever need. And I hope this was helpful. 
If it was, then tell a friend. Let's get more people to improve their art. Remember, we're gonna be starting a public Discord server once the channel reaches 1 million subs. It's approaching fast. Also, since you made it all the way to the end, you win a free brush set. You can get one of my main brush sets for free right here in the top right corner of the screen or down in the description below. This includes my legendary line art brush that I used in today's class. Use them responsibly. Finally, if you ever draw something cool as a result of the YouTube classes or with my brush back, show me. Tag me on social media on Instagram and Twitter. I can't usually comment because of the crazy amounts, but I do see everything and I love seeing what you create. Often, at least I'll try to retweet or share the stories on IG that you tag me in, just like I read every comment here on YouTube. So if you enjoyed the class and want me to keep producing more, let me know in the comments. If you also have any suggestions for future videos, shoot them down below as well. One last thing. Hey, when is it gonna be my turn?